So there I was interviewing for a big studio job uh, to do a job I had already done in the past. Um, but, you know, in my mind, I was still doubting myself saying, what if they know some tricks and techniques that I don't know? Uh, what if, you know, I'm actually kind of an amateur and all these professional people that have been working as, you know, dedicated lighting artists for years uh, are going to look at my work and be like, oh, this guy doesn't actually know what he's doing. That's right, everybody. Today we're talking about one of the things that affects a huge amount of artists. I see people writing about this online all the time, and uh, that is imposter syndrome. So today we're going to be talking about uh, exactly what is imposter syndrome, uh, some of the symptoms and the causes and triggers behind it. I'm going to share a story about recently when it affected me as well. And then I actually received a message about it uh, from a subscriber. So they were kind enough to allow me to read that to you guys and as well as my response and advice on it. And finally, we're gonna wrap up with some tips and tricks and mindsets that I use to get past imposter syndrome when it strikes. But first, I just wanna say, I know it's been a, a super long time since my last video. Uh, I've been really busy, there's been a lot of changes and I'll actually share some of those uh, with you coming up in this video. Um, but I just wanna say, I really appreciate your patience and also welcome to all the new subscribers and people that have been enjoying sharing the content. So without further ado, let's dive onto the topic of imposter syndrome. So what exactly is this affliction that seems to affect so many artists and creatives and people in general in their personal and professional lives? The dictionary definition of imposter syndrome is uh, the persistent inability to believe in that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as the results of one's efforts. And there's a nice little side note under that that says people suffering from imposter syndrome may be at increased risk of anxiety. Well, <laughs> Isn't that nice? Thanks for stating the obvious, Mr. Dictionary. So I think what they're really talking about uh, in that kind of broad generalization is the fact that a lot of the times once you achieve something or get into a position that's kind of new, uh, maybe you get a job at a game studio or maybe you're having your first art exhibition uh, or maybe you're launching you know, a YouTube channel like I did uh, last year. Uh, once you start to achieve something in that field, sometimes there can be this nagging suspicion in your mind that maybe I don't actually deserve the success or maybe I don't really know what I'm doing um, or, oh man, all these people around me are so much better. Like they're going to find out and I'm going to get fired or they must really think I'm stupid. Like I shouldn't speak up in meetings because my opinion isn't valid. I don't have that much experience. Uh, basically, it's just this nagging self-doubt that can kick in from time to time. So yes, if you're feeling like this uh, at work or maybe you know, you're working on personal creative projects, uh, and these, these thoughts start to creep into your mind, just know this is completely normal. It happens to so many people. Uh, you're not the only one suffering. Um, and hopefully this video can kind of shed some light on that and help you move past it. So what are the causes and triggers that kind of set these off in some people and start you down that dark path of self-doubt and uh, you know destroying your self-confidence? A lot of the time, for me, especially in the past, uh, it came from comparison uh, to other artists um, that were definitely more experienced, better than me, uh, you know, back in the day when I was just a little youngling learning, trying to gain the skills to get into the game industry, um, I would look at other more advanced artists' work and instantly just doubt all of the stuff that I had learned and achieved on my journey to becoming, you know, a professional artist. Uh, because when you're learning, obviously a lot of the time your stuff doesn't look as good as the professionals that have been doing it for years. But in your mind, you look at your work, you look at their work, and you're like, oh man, like I'm just not good at all. Like there's no point in continuing on. Um, but what you don't realize is behind the scenes, those people have been working for, you know, probably a decade or more on their skills. Um, so just by having that like envious comparison of like, oh, I need to be like them. And if I'm not, then, you know, I'm not as good. Or I'm, I'm just not going to ever get there. Uh, that little seed of self-doubt gets planted because you're not getting instant results. So as they say, comparison is like the root of all unhappiness. Um, so for, I think there's good and bad comparison that you can do. Uh, like I said, if it's an envious comparison of like, I wish I was there, I wish I had their skills, um, that is definitely a, a trigger for imposter syndrome. Uh, for me, definitely, uh, I'm sure for a lot of other people. Whereas if you can kind of have like an analytical comparison, say like, what is better about this person's work and what can I learn from it and apply that to my own work? Um, so maybe their lighting and materials are better. Maybe their composition and color, use of color is better. Uh, maybe they, you know, they have slightly more advanced shapes uh, they've learned how to model, in which case if they've learned how to do it, chances are you can learn how to do it too. You just have to really focus in and use that comparative, like uh, positive comparative analysis versus kind of just being envious and looking at what everything they have that you don't have and you know, telling yourself you're never going to get there. 
Another big trigger for me is when I'm working on something uh, for you know maybe a long period of time and it's just not going the way that I want it to be. I'm not getting the results I want. Um, so yeah, you know, ending a couple days on a bad note, that self-doubt can start to creep into your mind again. Like, um, do I really know what I'm doing? Uh, this isn't turning out the way that I want. I, I, I used to be able to nail whatever I wanted, but now, now I don't know, am I losing my skills and my ability? People are gonna find out around me like, you know, that's a big trigger um, if you're just having consistently bad time uh, doing what you're doing. So one of the remedies to that would be to just put it down, walk away and take a break for a while. If you're, you know, in a professional studio environment, sometimes you might not have that option or you might have to go as far as, you know what, I need to take a week's vacation, totally forget about doing art for a while, come back with a fresh, relaxed mind uh, and chances are you'll push through that barrier and your mind will click into place and say, and that actually wasn't that hard at all. Uh, it's sometimes, you know, what they say is like, uh, time apart makes the heart grow fonder or something like that. Um, so it definitely applies to your own work. If you're just constantly pushing, pushing, pushing and just having nothing but like bad results, just put it down, take a breather, take a break and go back to it when you're feeling like a little bit recharged. And one of the third big triggers for me is anytime I'm outside my area of expertise, uh, my area of mastery and definitely outside my comfort zone. Um, so you'll hear about some of this in the advice that I uh, give the subscriber in a little bit. But uh, anytime you're outside of your comfort zone, chances are you're learning. Uh, you're not, you haven't mastered what you're attempting to do. So of course the results, again, they aren't going to be instant. So you need to have that patience and be willing to put in multiple revisions, multiple attempts uh, before you're going to see that progress. So I know anytime I'm working on something new or some subject matter that I'm not comfortable with, again, you start to maybe have one of those bad days and that self-doubt comes creeping in. Uh, so I just need to remind myself, you know what, I, this is new, I'm, I, I'm not a master of this yet, I won't be a master of this for like a long time, so I might as well just start putting in the effort. It's okay to do multiple revisions, uh, go back, revise my work, um, and you know, I just know it's going to extend my time horizon on getting to the results I want if it's something that I haven't done before or I'm comfortable with. Okay, so story time. Uh, I recently, you know, in the last year or so, I definitely went through a bout of imposter syndrome. Um, and this is when I was actually, you know, about to start my job at Warner Brothers as a, a full-time senior lighting artist. Uh, and, you know, I, I had been an environment artist and a lighting artist in the past, usually a combo of both. Uh, but this was my first time really going to a big, huge AAA studio as a dedicated lighting artist. Um, and as I was in the process of applying for and getting that job, uh, imposter syndrome started to sneak up on me. So there I was interviewing for a big studio job uh, to do a job I had already done in the past. Um, but, you know, in my mind, I was still doubting myself saying, what if they know some tricks and techniques that I don't know? Uh, what if, you know, I'm actually kind of an amateur and all these professional people that have been working as, you know, dedicated lighting artists for years uh, are going to look at my work and be like, oh, this guy doesn't actually know what he's doing. But luckily, you know, I, I spoke about it. I talked about um, my, the feelings I was having with my good friend Lincoln, who you've seen in some of the other videos. Uh, I told him about my fears and like all those, those thoughts that were running through my mind. And he was instantly like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, you clearly know what you're doing. Uh, you've been doing lighting for like about 10 years um, and environments. So like you have a huge experience to pull from on both sides of the things. Uh, like there's no way that they have, you know, Maybe they might have some tools and stuff that you've never used, but there's no way that they're going to have these secret techniques and you're going to look like an idiot if you don't know them. Uh, so that was, that was a big thing of having that support from your friends and family uh, and just actually talking about it what, when it happens to you. Uh, I find a lot of times, you know, a lot of people can post about it online and instantly there's people there to support them, reassure them, be like, you know what, this is just all in your head. You clearly know what you're doing. I've seen your portfolio. You're an awesome artist. It doesn't matter. You're still learning, et cetera, et cetera. So that would be another big tip is to get out there and just, if you're feeling these thoughts, you not don't suffer in silence. Like reach out, if you're in the industry, reach out to your lead, talk to them about it. Chances are they'll tell you the exact same thing has happened to them in the past. Uh, if you're you know, a student, reach, talk about it with your fellow students in your art class. Um, because, you know, maybe a lot of students don't want to talk about it because they feel nervous. Like everyone else is such a good artist, but I'm, I kind of suck. Like, uh, I, I don't want to tell them that I think I suck. Maybe they're going to think I'm, I suck even more and they're just going to dogpile on me and then I'm going to get kicked out of art school and then, you know, their mind just explodes. Uh, no. Talk about it with people all around you. Talk about it to your mentors, your teachers. Uh, by being open about it, chances are other people will come in and kind of shine those rays of sunshine on you, you and your abilities 
and uh, highlight the good things that you do know what you're doing and kind of reinforce that stuff. And that'll help you smash through about of imposter syndrome as well. And kind of like a bit of an update uh, on me um, when it comes to, you know, opportunities for imposter syndrome to rear its head. Uh, I recently accepted a position as a lead lighting artist uh, at a studio called Counterplay Games, working on one of the first PS5 games called Godfall. So moving into an official leadership role, uh, my first time as a lead lighting artist, uh, that could be definitely scary. It could open the door to let imposter syndrome come slithering back in again. Sometimes you just really have to go all in, take that leap of faith in yourself. Uh, to, if you really want to advance your skills and abilities as an artist or your career in the game industry or, you know, as a creative in general, whatever you're doing. So have you guys ever struggled with imposter syndrome? Uh, is that something you're currently going through right now? Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, I really love reading your guys' you know, personal stories and stuff like that. And I'll do my best to get back to as many of you as I can, maybe give you some quick advice. Um, but I'm super, super interested to hear your side of the picture. Speaking of that, uh, let's dive into that message from another subscriber, another artist that watches the videos and just needed a little bit of advice and sent me a message. So here we go. Uh, the message reads, uh, I'm an environment artist and I've just passed my uh, probation period. Now I know before I got myself in the door, there are going to be artists who are uh, much better than me, artists who learn quicker, who work faster, and it's just started to dawn on me how much wider the skill gaps are between me and other junior artists who started at the same time as me. Sounds scary, right? Uh, to make matters worse, I've been doing this personal piece of, uh, of a concept art I found, and it's hard. I can't get the shapes down. I literally can't do it. As a result, I'm second guessing my skills as an artist and myself and just everything. I don't know why I'm messaging you. You probably won't even see this, but if you do, perhaps some words of wisdom. Have you had an experience like anything like this before? P.S. Love your YouTube. Keep at it. Thumbs up. Uh, super, super awesome message. Uh, I, I definitely felt the pain, you know, that they were going through. Um, and the good news is most artists have gone through this. So definitely thanks for reaching out. Uh, and here was my reply. Uh, so I said, hey, first off, congrats on passing your probationary period. That's awesome. Um, what you're talking about seems like it could be something called imposter syndrome. It's when you feel like a fraud slash not good enough compared to those around you even though that's not the case. Good news is we all go through this from time to time, even myself after being in the industry for 13 years. Everyone progresses at their own rate and you seem to be pushing yourself by tackling personal projects, which is awesome. Uh, that's a good point. Like even though this person was going through a frustrating time, you know, looking at those around them and being like, am I not good enough? They're, they were pushing themselves to continue to do a personal project, which is really cool because it shows passion and drive. So back to my reply here. Um, I struggle with complex shapes, especially sci-fi stuff. As a result, any sci-fi scene takes me about three times as long as doing an open world nature scene. Uh, again, what I was talking about outside of my zone of comfort, right? Uh, it requires more revisions and rework, and I never hit the models and shapes uh, on my first or second attempt. It's because it's outside of my comfort zone. Chances are you're outside of your area of comfort and mastery, which is great. That's how you learn and get better. A hundred percent. If you're uncomfortable, you're probably learning. You just have to dial up the patience and keep grinding out the revisions until it's on track. Uh, so that patience point is huge. Just remember the company hired you for a reason and they passed your probation. So you're clearly doing a good job. Just try to accept being uncomfortable. means you are growing your skills for complex shapes. Maybe study mechanical or industrial design, and that can help a lot. Just try to nail the one or two things that make that concept awesome instead of trying to match it exactly. Uh, it could be the mood and colors. It could be the sense of scale and detail. Uh, just focus on one, two, one to two elements to avoid overwhelm. And then I said, hope this helps. The main thing is patience and putting in the time and grind through the lows, uh, which will lead to mastery and higher highs. Thanks for watching my vids. Um, I'm actually going to create a video on imposter syndrome soon. Would you mind if I use this message in it? Uh, blah, blah, blah. So that was definitely very brave of that person to allow me to read something so personal uh, live here on the air and, you know, help you guys out with uh, giving an insight into someone else's personal struggles. Uh, definitely really appreciate it. So let's wrap this video up with just a few more tips and tricks on how you can attack and combat uh, imposter syndrome when it decides to sneak up on you. So the first tip, it actually goes back to what we were talking about in the definition of 
uh, imposter syndrome is the lack or attack on your self-confidence um, in your skills and abilities and you know the success that you might have had already. And to me, one of the easiest and quickest ways to increase your self-confidence in your abilities and skills is to actually finish the projects that you start. This is so huge. Uh, for me, looking back when I was a very you know junior artist um, or learning to get into the game industry, I had so many abandoned projects that I just kind of threw to the wayside and I was never finishing anything. Uh, so I had this nagging self-doubt that was growing and growing and I didn't have the confidence in my abilities to actually push through to the end. Um, so I always tell students and other artists like, just finish your projects, even if you're tired of it, push through to the very end because basically every time you finish a project, it's like a big, you know, a bunch of experience going into your self-confidence bar uh, if, this, if your life was like an RPG, right? Um, so you know, if you have one or two projects under your belt, you're, you know, you'd be like a little sapling like a tree, some you know, hard winds come around, you sway around, you're, oh, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. But the more projects you finish and get under your belt, uh, you know, if you finish like 20, 50 different projects over the years, you're going to be a lot more hardened and be able to, to look backwards and use that confidence in your ability to actually finish things. Uh, much like a big tree, you know, you have all these rings as they grow and, and, and then you're just, just the, the harsh breeze could be blowing and you're just standing there strong, um, not really swaying too much because you're confident based on your past track record. And this is so huge. Your past definitely influences your future. So, you know, make sure you're making the right choices when it comes to actually finishing your work. Like I said, there's always a point in every project where you kind of just want to throw it away. But if you do that consistently, it's going to chip away at your self-confidence uh, meter. And you're just going to kind of get into this mindset of like, well, I never finished anything, so I must not be very good. Versus if you push through to the end, you know, you put that post up on ArtStation. Hey, everyone, look at what I did. Even if it gets like one or two likes, no one sees it. You know that you've, you had the confidence to push through to the end and finish it, which is going to massively increase your confidence when you tackle something more complex or outside of your comfort zone. Because you'll look back in the past and say, hey, I had the ability to learn and you know, tackle something that I was uncomfortable with before. Now there's another challenge coming my way. I know based on my past uh, actions and behaviors, I have the ability to hit this challenge and just rock it. So this next one is probably more for the people already in the industry, uh, maybe for students or anyone working in a group environment, but definitely people in studios that suffer from this. And there's a lot of them based on what I see on Twitter, uh, myself included, obviously. Uh, and that's to have faith in the people around you and the people that hired you. Uh, they obviously hired you for a reason. They saw something in you and, you know, one or two bad days, they're not going to like fire you and let you go or, or whatever. Um, so, you know, usually when you get hired at a studio, you have to go through maybe multiple interviews. You probably talk to two, three, four, five, six different people and all of those people have to sign off on you and you've go through, you've already gone through a very rigorous process. So I know a lot of people would think about like, oh, I'm going to get found out I'm a fraud, but really you're not going to fool three to six people or more uh, in the interview process um, unless you're a complete psychopath <laughs> or something like that. But no, seriously, uh, all those people saw something in your skills and what you presented and how you presented yourself. So just sit back and be like, okay, all these people have faith in me. I got to have some faith in myself. I'm going to trust them. Um, that they put their faith in the right person and I'm just going to move forward even though I'm doubting myself at this moment. And that really is kind of the truth as we tend to see a lot of our own flaws and mistakes and blow them out of proportion when a lot of the people around us will never even notice or you know it's not that big of a deal. Uh, there's that expression that says you're making a, a mountain out of a molehill, right? So you know maybe you're doing an environment or something or a character and something about it just isn't you know, the way that you imagined it would be, chances are a lot of people aren't even going to notice those flaws and they're going to focus on what's really cool about it. Uh, I, you know, I've definitely worked on environments where I'm like, oh shit, this isn't turning out the way that I wanted it. Like all of this whole corner looks kind of bad. But in a review, we're running through the world and I'm sitting there sweating and being like, oh man, they, oh man, they're not going to like it. Uh, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like my, my skills as an artist kind of suck. And when in reality, half the meeting they spend focused on the things they really do like about the environment and the, you know, the good work other people are doing, the good work you're doing on the team. Uh, and they, uh, sometimes they don't even notice the bad stuff and you just kind of float it through. Um, but seriously, not every project is going to be 100% perfect in every aspect. So getting over those little tiny flaws um, instead of blowing them out of proportion is absolutely critical. And in reality, especially in today's social media age, people are only posting their highlight reels, right? You don't see the downsides that other people are going through. So it's easy to assume that your flaws are a lot bigger by comparison. 
Um, a lot of people will only post their best work on ArtStation. Uh, so, you know, it seems like they're this godlike artist, but they probably struggle with their own projects. There's probably projects they've thrown away too, projects they've finished but never posted. Uh, again, it's just the highlight reel, right? So don't take what you see on social media as reality and use that to think that you're a complete failure or you don't know what you're doing. So those would be my final tips. Uh, I really hope they help a lot of you guys out. Um, just know that you're, you know, you're not alone. Don't suffer in silence. Reach out to those people around you. Um, and know that it's completely normal. It's a completely normal feeling to go through from time to time, or you know, more often than not, just for some people, uh, it's totally normal. Me, as a professional artist who's been doing this stuff for like 13 years almost, pretty much, uh, I still go through it from time to time. You know, people that are top of their game go through this. Like even Albert Einstein went through this apparently. Um, so you know, it's it's very normal, and it's not just affecting you. So if you've made it this far and you're enjoying the video, uh, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, because I'm actually gonna do a couple more videos on this type of mindset stuff. Um, definitely coming up, uh, one on burnout and one on depression. Two things I've definitely suffered from uh, throughout the course of my career. And I'm sure a lot of other people go through that kind of stuff too. So if you want my tips and tricks on dealing with those, make sure you're subscribed. The videos will show up right in your feed. And uh, it's a big discussion that we can all have together and I'm super stoked to get those out soon. Of course, the art tutorial content is coming back as well. Uh, this is definitely a long-term project for me, this Polygon Academy thing. It's not gonna you know, stop. Some people were saying in the comments, are you still making videos? Yes, definitely. The videos are gonna continue. Uh, like I said to some people, I don't consider anything a success or failure until I've been doing it for about five to 10 years. So I, this channel is only, what, a year and a half old. So there's plenty more runway to go before I say it's a failure and pull the plug. Um, so don't worry about that. Of course, I always appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the videos, leaving your comments and feedback. Uh, for this one especially, if you think it's gonna help somebody that you know that could be suffering from imposter syndrome, send it their way. Hopefully it can help them out too. I would definitely appreciate that. That's one of the best ways you guys can say thanks is by helping the channel grow. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.